choices, choices. I have so many stories I want to tell you, but I can't decide. There's the Iraqi barber, there's the bank robbery, and then there's my friend Matt the Wizard. Um, let's ask Chels, shall we? Let's just give her a buzz. Speaker is my phone. She's going to lose her shit. Hello? Chels! Yo. Listen, you got three choices. Um, Iraqi barber, bank robbery, or Matt, my friend Matt the Wizard. Choose one. No time to explain. Just do it. What? Just fucking... Random shit? Just, just, okay, just choose one, man. Like... What Ir is it? Iraqi barber, bank robbery, or my friend Matt the Wizard. Uh, uh, what? Iraqi barber is what he said. Iraqi Baba, bank yeah. robbery, or my friend Matt the Wizard? I don't know who Matt the Wizard is, but let's go. Oh my God, just Wizard. fucking choose one, Charles. Matt the Wizard. Okay, Matt done. The Wizard. I don't know. <laughs> okay, 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 bye. So random. So, Chelsea said Matt the Wizard, so it looks like we're going with the bank robbery instead. Now, uh, this is what I have to do with every day. All right, many, many years ago, um, back in 1992, I believe, 1992, I was out on parole, and, um, and I had to visit my parole officer. Now, conveniently, he was, he was five minutes away, and I was driving down, and I was at a set of traffic lights, and it was, I had to turn left, and it was uh, in an area called Punchbowl. Now, Punchbowl, for those of you who live in Australia, will know it's a very shit area. Oh, by the way, um, hi, I like toast. Covering my work logo. So... There was, a, there was a bank, a small branch on the corner. Um, it was called the Commonwealth Bank in a really shitty area. And I saw a guy standing outside that bank in a very obviously fake beard. And I'm thinking, the fuck's going on here? Like, you know, everyone in Punchbowl, like, okay, in Punchbowl, um, any, if you hear about a shooting or a drive-by or a stabbing or a mugging, it's always fucking Punchbowl on the news, right? So I'm looking at this guy thinking... I don't recognize him, even with a fake beard, because this guy had really distinct features, right? He was short, he was stocky, uh, he looked like Gerard Depardieu. Uh, Gerard Depardieu was this really not good-looking heartthrob in the 90s, and possibly, I'll just bring a picture up, you know. So this guy had distinct features, like a big forehead, big nose, and the thing is, what I noticed is that the gap, or the space between the bottom of his nose and his lip, was really big. So much so that the moustache on the fake beard didn't um, cover that, you know. So he's sitting there, and then the light turns green, and I had to, I had to get out of there. Sorry, my shirt's, uh, it's getting itchy, right? I had to get out of there. So I went to my parole officer, and um, you know, he goes, "How's your day?" That man, I think the Commonwealth Bank is going to get robbed. And he says, "What makes you think that?" I've got to cover this. And I said, "Because X, Y, and Z." He said, "Why didn't you call?" This is nineteen ninety two, right? Maybe ninety three, ninety two, I think. Mobile phones were kind of rare, they were, they were still these big humongous bricks reserved for the wealthy. And like, how the fuck am I supposed to call you? I was driving. He goes, we need to call the police. I'm like, okay. And conveniently, he was located right next to Bankstown Police Station. Bankstown was one suburb over. So he calls the police and within a few minutes, two guys have walked over. Now, I knew these guys because um, the police ran a, a thing called the Police Citizens Youth Club, the PCYC. Shorthand for it was a police boys club. And it was a good thing they did. It was just like a huge, every area practically had one. It was like a hall and it had uh, free weights and a boxing ring and gym mats and that. And I was there five days a week boxing and lifting weights when I was when I was younger, you know. So I was about, I was 19 at the time when I was on a pro. So anyway, two of these clubs came in and I got to know a lot of the police there. They were like mentors and that. So when I... When I messed up many years ago, um, they were heartbroken, so some of them actually went as character witnesses for me. Um, and I, I guess it helped, but I still had to do some time. Anyway, so these guys walk in like, hey, how you been? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, cool. They go, what are you up to? I'm like, oh, nothing. He goes, hey, so what's going on? Hey, you got our eyes on you, mate. You know, watching. Like, oh, yeah, 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 it's cool. And so you witnessed something, did you? And they took my statement, and they had a couple of mugshots, uh, folders of mugshots. Now, these folders were just clear sleeve folders, and the mugshots were printouts inserted into these sleeves. So I was like, eh, going through, going through, okay, that's the guy. This is about two folders in, right? I'm like, are, are you sure? I go, that is the fucking guy. Because are you certain? I go, fucking beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm certain. That, that's the guy, right? So fair enough. They said, listen, can, can we call you? I'm like, yeah, of course, you know? So I think it was the next day or maybe the day after. This is going back. Well, it's been about fucking nearly 30 years now so um i get a phone call they said can you come down to the station and i did and um I'm just, this shirt's itchy 
Ugh, oh, that's polyester. So I went down to the station and there were two detectives there and my two friends, the cops. And one of the, the detectives got me to relay my statement again and he had other folders with mugshots. Now, these folders contain guys that look kind of similar to the guy that I pointed out. So I was guessing maybe they're trying to narrow it down. So I'm, I'm, I'm going through them, you know, and I go, that's the guy. And I go, are you certain? I go, 100%. And they said, do you know this guy? I said, nope. I go, have you met this guy? I said, nope. And he said, do you know anyone? Do your friends or anyone know this guy? I'm like, well, how would I know who my friends know? But I don't think so. I go, if it's not him, then he's got a twin brother. And these guys bent over, buckled, laughing. Like the two detectives and the two cops were just in hysterics, holding their stomachs and just laughing their asses off. And I, I was confused. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. And it took them a while to sort of compose themselves to get over it. And one of the detectives said, hey, just sit tight for a second. You're not going anywhere. I go, no, of course not, you know. So he goes, I'll be back. I need to get someone in on this. So he disappeared. And the two cops that were left were still kind of sniggering, you know. And I said, and I'm, I'm getting paranoid now because I'm thinking, you know, have I fallen into a trap? Like, um, is this guy that I picked out, is he not a real person? Is he like a composite of a whole bunch of other people put together and... I've picked him somehow, you know. So I asked one of the cops, I go, man, I'm not being set up, am I? And he said, nah, man, I go, come on, I'm just trying to do the right thing. He goes, nah, dude, you're good, you're good, trust me, you're... it'll make sense in a second, you know. So I said, all right. The two detectives came back with two other detectives, and these guys had resting bitch faces. You could just tell they were fucking assholes. Like, these guys would plant drugs on you, really stern looking, you know. And then they stood there, uh, really intimidating looking, and one of the other detectives, the original one, says, can you tell him what you just told me? And I said, like, that's, that's the guy. He goes, no, no, if it's not him, then I go, well, if it's not him, I said, it's his twin brother. And those two detectives and the rest buckled laughing to the point where one of them fell down almost onto his knees and he was using his hand on the desk to hold himself up. And they were just in fucking hysterics. And now I'm really confused and paranoid like what the what the fuck i don't get it because someone told me what's going on so about 20 seconds went by and these guys like you know high-fiving each other one of them slapped me on the shoulder said good work i'm like what the fuck and they go here's the deal this guy that you picked actually does have a twin brother and they're both known felons but they're not from this area they're from up north somewhere around i think cherry brook or something you know it's far off yeah now you may be wondering why you're saying this abs you're going to get yourself no this is 30 years ago the guy's dead anyway now apparently um so i don't really care i don't give a shit so they're just good on you you know this this, this is great you know because the witness testimony the guy that was robbing the bank inside was one of the twins all right no one knows who but the the, the description was pretty much exactly the same as the guy sort of outside and they just needed to know what was going on. So they asked me if I wanted to go to court to, as a witness. I said, no, no fucking way. And I go, witness protection? And I go, fuck that. And I was still living with my parents. And um, they said, listen, we can call you as a hostile, hostile witness. you know. But the thing is, when you're on the witness register, apparently, well, the legal defense gets all your details, your name, your address, and they can just sort of poke holes in you and shit. I've got, I've got family, man. I don't want to fuck with me in that. They go, look, we'll bring you as a hostile witness. Hostile witness, if you're not sure, is when... um. You're a witness, but you're not there voluntarily. You're kind of being compelled to go there, you know? So I said, oh, fuck, okay, fine. I'm like, man, come on, man. Oh, yeah, okay, cool, done. So it was time for the court case. I, I rocked up and, um, you know, I was on the stand and the, I think the uh, defense was questioning me and said, oh, you know, can you point to the guy who, you know? And I said, well, it's one of these two. And I said, well, which one is it? I go, well, I don't know. These guys are identical twins. I don't think their own mother can tell them apart. But they go, well, you need to, you know, put, I go, well, fine. It's that one there, right? And then they said something, wrote something down. And then the other guy gets up, the one of the prosecutors, the guys I was witnessing for. And he mentioned my testimony that brought it up that in the police station, I said that if it's not him, he definitely has a twin brother without knowing that this guy ever had a twin brother. And apparently... That sealed the case. Now, I didn't, it wasn't me single handedly. These guys got fucked over, but it's that one time in my entire life that being a smart ass actually paid off for something good. So, um, I got a lot of stories. Um, that's it. That's all we got. I, I, I love you. Wait, uh, of course, it's not raining. Blah, blah, blah. And I love you. And, uh, I, I have a lot of things to talk about, um, which I'll bring up probably <laughs> shoot another five videos in the next two weeks. I don't think I've, Launch videos this frequently in a long time, but um, it's my therapy. I love you. Bye.